Hello, this is John Purcell from QuantumLifetime.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at wave number. So in the last tutorial we saw that we can represent, um, if we simplify a EM wave, electromagnetic wave, a lot, we can simplify its electric component. Uh, we can represent it um, by this, this equation. It's a simplified representation. So E, the electric field strength, equals peak electric field strength E0 times the sine of kx minus omega t, where k and omega are constants. And let's just take a look at um, the meaning of k in this tutorial. So let's consider a wave where the value of the wave, let's just call it y, is equal to sine of kx, and we'll see what it means. Now, uh, usually, um, we think we sort of associate sine with circles, and the reason for that is if we just like draw a circle here, let's have some axes. Um, if this is a unit circle and we have a vector sweeping around this unit circle in this direction, so this line sweeping around anti-clockwise, and here's the angle between the vector and the horizontal, then um, the sine of this angle, theta, is going to be the projection of this vector on this axis here, which I'll call the y-axis. And that's all um, sine is. It's just uh, like a black box that takes this value here, this angle, and spits out this number here, the projection of this vector on this vertical line. And if we, if we draw this out so that um, we have a graph where theta increases along in this direction, and we've got y represented vertically here, then we get a graph like this, which is the familiar graph of sine of theta, or sine of x, or whatever you like. Now let's take a look at the physical significance of k, um, because usually um, to go around the circle, the, the, the complete angle equal to 360 degrees is, um, is 2 pi radian. So usually we measure angle in science in radians, which is equal to the circumference of the circle divided by the radius, and that gives us value of 2 times pi rad or radians. So that means that on this graph uh, over here, this um, the value, the length, if you like, of theta, the increase from any two similar points on the graph, let's take these two, is going to be equal to 2 pi. And we call that um, the wavelength, which we usually represent by the Greek letter lambda. So um, how does k change things? Well, um, what it does is um, it multiplies the number of waves that can fit into a given length, basically. So we know that uh, sine of kx, or k theta, let's say, plus 2 pi, will equal sine of kx. So whatever we start with, if we add on 2 pi to the argument to sine, we get the same value again, because we're just going around the circle. And that must also equal sine of kx plus lambda. Because if we add the wavelength onto x, we're also getting back to the same point we started with. So we can see that if we compare this with this, we can infer that kx plus 2 times pi is going to be equal to kx plus k times lambda. So we're just multiplying this out here to get kx plus k lambda. So k lambda is 2 pi, so we can say k times lambda, the wavelength, equals 2 pi. Or k equals 1 divided by the wavelength times 2 pi. So we call k the wave number because if we think of this as being measured in meters, for example, we see that we're dividing the, um, one meter by the number of waves that we can fit into that meter. So k is just the number of waves we can fit into a meter times 2 pi. So it's like saying it's the number of waves that we can fit around the edge of a unit circle like this. The number of waves that we can fit around a unit circle is what k is. And um, although I'm, I'm not sure if this is really going to be vital to the stuff that we're going to uh, get onto, so don't worry if, uh, if you haven't fully got your head around this, but I thought it would be interesting just to talk about this um, because it's, it's just interesting to have a significance in mind for these constants. And in the next tutorial, we're going to look at omega. So we're going to follow on from this and we're going to find an interpretation 
for this constant omega here, which is known as angular frequency. And by the way, um, k is often known as a wave number, but because it's actually multiplied by 2 pi, um, it's sometimes also called the angular or circular wave number as well. So that's it for this time. You can find more on quantumlifetime.com. And until next time, keep it real. <laughs>